Hi, everyone. Welcome to a, another KE Report webinar. In This webinar is being produced in conjunction with Focus Communications. My name is Corey Fleck, and I am your host for this webinar. We are featuring TriStar Gold, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol TSG, and on the OTCQX under the symbol TSGZF. I am joined by the president and CEO, Nick Appleyard. To bring everybody up to speed, TriStar Gold is focused at the Castelo de Sonhos project in Brazil. Now, Nick and I have already conducted one of these webinars a little under a month ago that focused on the PFS and optimization. This webinar very much focused on exploration. Now, Nick, welcome to another webinar. And everybody who is tuning in, you can ask questions through this webinar platform by using the chat or Q&A function. I will monitor those as Nick walks through some of the slides in the LeapFrog presentation and interject those questions throughout the webinar. Now, Nick, I'm going to fire up the presentation here. But before we get into it, just give everybody a general overview of what you want to get across here in terms of the exploration potential at Castello de Sonio. Yeah, Corey, no, thanks. And thanks for having me again. Um, yeah, today... Yeah, what I really want people to understand is obviously we've been focusing a lot on the pre-feasibility study, and that is a, a, a major step forward and a, and a critical milestone in developing a project. And it is the, you know, the, the, the sort of the heart, heart of the value today. But I don't want people to forget that there's still a lot more exploration to do. So we sort of want to talk about the different exploration areas on the project, um, the potential scale of the project, uh, and, and, and where we might be drilling later in the year. Okay. Okay, over to me. All right, Nick. Yeah, you walk us through it and everybody, yes, just send in your questions. We already have a couple questions that we'll get to, but I'll let Nick run through most of this presentation first. Okay, right. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'll just, as I, as I just mentioned, I will be talking about our, you know, our expectations, our plans, and um, what we'd like to achieve this year. So forward-looking statements, there's always some element of risk in them. And um, as we all know, the world is fairly insane right now. So I please take you know take that caution yeah that's that's saying it lightly there yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh just a quick recap on the company try so we've got castello sonios in, in right in the center of brazil um you know very strong team we've got a large reserve 1.4 million ounces the project has been doing really nice moving forward really really well and um you know, I mean, we couldn't be happier with the way things have gone in brazil and, and, and the advances on the project but as I said today I just sort of wanted to take a step back and look at what, what else there might be, and, you know, because there are sort of business things to contemplate as to whether you keep doing exploration now or you, or you start advancing permitting and feasibilities. So we'll just look at the exploration today. First, very quick recap where we are with the PFS. As I said, we've got 1.4 million ounces of reserves and, um, you know, great economics. So there is a really good project there. So also, if we focus on the exploration, don't forget that there is a really good asset already at the heart of this moving forward. So, you know, you know quite controllable um, CapEx limits, you know, US um, MPB 321 for a you know, rate of return there. And, um, you know, all in sustaining a 900 bucks an ounce. Uh, as we mentioned, the world's a little crazy right now, but one thing it's done is it's shot gold up well over $1,900 and briefly over 2000 So our PFS was at 1550 and we just wanted, I have been asked, you know, by a few investors what this number was. So I figured we'd show everyone, you know, $1,900, you are making a 50% rate of return, $2,000, you are at 54%. If we just scale up the... Um, the revenue from the old project, obviously, you would actually scale the whole project and those numbers would probably be better or, or completely different from that again. But it just shows you this is a really, really good um, project at these IRRs. Um, you know, at, these, at this price now, it's already a good project. And, you know, if you move up to where we are today in spot price, it's even better. Nick, are there any quick comparisons you can make in terms of the IRR to any other assets or deposits that are well known? I know we are going to talk exploration, yep. but that question quickly came in. Yep. Um, I didn't have any off the top of my head. I mean, I know that, you know, everything I've done through my career, you know, once you're making a, a post-tax rate of return of over 20%, you're, you're in, um, 
you know, very, very good company and very select company. So that's the way I always think of it. If we, if we can make, if we can get it over that hurdle, it's looking really good. And, and there are very few projects that can show that at this stage, you know, I mean, once you've got over the hurdle of putting capital in, then it becomes a little easier, but, um, you know, for us to be at, you know, well, I think we're at 28% at 1550 gold post tax. So at spot price now, you know, you've got to be a well over 40% rate of return and that would put it in a very select group of projects. Yeah, I also use that about 20 to 25% post tax IRR as kind of the barometer for judging these projects. But yeah. thank you for that there, Nick. Yeah. Um, so just to start, this is on expiration. So that means we've got to go back to geology. Castellosonis is a paleoplasa. Um, most geologists haven't worked on many paleoplasas or any. There are uh, they are numerically quite few around the world, but when you find them, they're nearly always really, really large. Um, Castello is very similar, almost identical geologically to Tarqua, which is in Ghana, and it's at Goldfields Mine, and it's yeah, you know, and, and Jacobina, which is a Yamana mine in Brazil. Just to give you an idea, I believe your manor is somewhere around 15 to 20 million ounces of gold, sort of total endowment. Tarqua, uh, last I heard, was well north of 30 million ounces of gold. So they're big deposits when you find these things. Uh, the most famous of the Paleoplasters is with Whitwatersrand. Uh, we don't claim that we're analogous. I mean, Whitwatersrand is just insane in the size of it. I think it's 1.5 billion ounces or something ridiculous like that. But it is older. It is different. Um, so, you know, don't let anyone do those comparisons. You know, Jacobina, Tarqua, Castello are a certain type of paleoplaster, and, and there are various types around the world. So anyway, so that gives us our model that we want to explore. We've learned a lot from, you know, looking at Tarqua, looking at Jacobino, having consultants who've worked on multiple projects on those projects and they've you know, learned how to follow the gold, how, how, what's important and um, what we should be looking for. So just to look at it, um, this is a sort of an image of, of Castello de Sonios. Those familiar with the project will have seen before the yellow outline is our gold in soil anomaly. Um, but what I've over highlighted it here is the orange color is the current mineral resource area and the purple line is a boundary 100 meters out from the closest drill hole so you can see we've got a large anomalous area still without drilling and that our drilling is really really focused in esperanza south and esperanza central um and you know to, as resource development drilling and you know so there's still large areas to to, to explore where we've got gold in soil which is the most simple and the most obvious target generating um, exploration tool we have. Um, uh, Nick, what is the mineralized footprint then of this, uh, either of the resource of total mineralized, even gold in, gold in soil anomalies? Yeah, I mean, you've got, um, I mean, we always think about, I mean, you can see there that scale bar is a little bit blurry at the bottom, but that scale bar is 2.5 kilometers long. So you're sort of talking six kilometers across, six, seven kilometers across by about, you know, from sort of north west to southeast and probably about eight kilometers from southeast to northwest. So, you know, it's a, it's a big area. And, and we will be looking when I switch out of the presentation mode into Micromine, not a lot of leapfrog, I'm sure the software oh. guys would get upset. There. <laughs> um, I'll be showing you in a bit more detail what that looks like. Okay. Uh, real quick, just in terms of the resource, yep. then is that pretty much all drilled out? No, not at all. No, no, okay. no. I mean, and it's, I mean, that shows us uh, the 100 meter drill spacing, you know, inside the purple, and that re that is inferred resources in orange there. So obviously, you've got to drill that more out. And there is gaps and, and, and down dip extensions and lateral extensions to that as well. Okay, thank you. So, um, you know, we did, we um, start up a partnership with Goldspot uh, Discoveries a year and a half ago, two years ago now, to use artificial intelligence and machine learning to aid us in our exploration, to make it more efficient, more focused, um, get better value for every dollar. And we're doing that still now. We're still working with them and we're still very happy with the partnership and the work they provide to us. Um, so what we're doing is we, you know, we basically, we, we feed in exactly what we want to look for. So we've, you know, we defined the stratigraphic units that we need to see. We, we said we want to see these gold bearing paleo channels. We want to find conglomerates with gold. We want to find 
something 100 meters within within 100 meters of surface and over a gram a ton and you know we sort of feed this information back to them and say this is the target we want you to find it's not just like open running a computer and it comes up and says oh there might be a bit of gold over there we're very specific on what we want to find where we want to find you know even to the point where we go we don't want we don't want steep dipping structures we want shallow dipping structures because that's more amenable to open pits and you get more ounces per vertical meter out of a shallow dipping structure than a steep dipping one so all of that information is fed into the algorithms and the computer program that i must admit is way beyond me to, to generate what we want to do and i'm going to very quickly just talk through that process before i get on to the actual targets themselves so what we've done, what we've learned at um, Casello is geochemistry is probably the most critical factor. So we do um, for acid digest ICP on every sample we take now. And from that, uh, machine learning kicks in and gives us these geostratigraphic or, you know, um, conformable units. Uh, basically, it's lithology, but it's about based, based on geochemistry. And that's what you can see on this left-hand picture here. You, know, you can see that we see these nice conformable structures which are consistent over long distances. A geologist couldn't do that visually because the sediments look very similar, but with the ICP, it becomes quite easy. So from that, you know, from those assays, and then from some of the clever work that Goldspot do, again, it's, it's beyond me, they can generate 3D plan, which is this here looking at in the middle. And then obviously we cut sections through that, look at our drill holes. You know, firstly, our geologists are checking everything. Occasionally, things like artificial intelligence does throw out some, some crazy answers. Not as often as I thought it would, but it, it happens. So we check it. Um, and, and we actually also then, once we're happy with it, those units then get used in our resource modeling and all of our exploration planning, you know, to look for the, the same units, where are we gonna find them? Where should we be drilling um, in the future? So and, Nick, um, in terms of building out these targets with the AI, how successful has this been in the past? Or is this going to be the first time that you guys drill these AI targets, let's call them? Um, no, they, before we drilled some of the last drill, drill program, the AI was kicking in. It's been, it's a little hard to see. It's a small image, but the image on the left, if you see how consistent those units are, it, that's something that for us was spectacular because when we tried doing it visually with geology, it was very hard to do that, to build up this level of detail and mapping. Um, so it gives us the stratigraphic units. And now we're working on, within those units, you, you, you get a very a lot of detail on them. So you can actually see with undulations, which would actually be a channel, and that's where your high-grade gold is going to be sitting. So this will be the first, you know, obviously every time you get more detailed, you get more information. Um, this will be the first time we've got enough information to actually chase the undulations, to chase the channels themselves within the units. Um, so that'll be a test to see how it works in this next program. But the general consistency and, and, and playing and targeting the units themselves, it's been really good. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is what comes out of it. Um, again, you can see that same horseshoe, we call it the horseshoe shape, it sort of closed off of, of the gold in the soil anomaly. And what Goldspot have given us is a, a select group of, I'm not sure what it is, a couple of thousand meters of drilling to test specifically targets at exactly the spot they think we should be looking at. Um, you know, they've really got two different styles of target here, proximal to the PFS, which is the extensions of these high grade channels. And, um, and obviously the new targets, but again, the new targets aimed at high grade mineralization, you know, close to surface. Um, what we've done, we as a company, obviously uh, there's a 2000 meter program there or something to test each area. Our geologists then build out a draw program, a bigger, more extensive draw program from that. And, um, and that's what we'll be talking about here as well. And, you know, and you can see the, the green stars are the gold spot generated drill holes. You can see them outside or, or lateral to either the PFS area or, or the new target areas. <clears throat> Nick, how did these targets that they presented to you uh, correlate to maybe where you thought that you should be drilling? Um, some of it, you know, obviously they're within the gold geochem, so we would have gone there anyway. That makes you know, it makes a lot of sense for for the targets to the west. 
what they do is they get us more accurate, hopefully, and, and a better chance of going right into the prime unit first time, rather than having to do long cross sections to try and map out and find your way of where you are when you're in an area with no drilling and you know unlimited um, surface exposure. So that's there. And then in the with the work in and around the pre-feasibility area, this ability, apparent ability now to see the undulations in the layers, which seem to be tracking the channels and the high grade zones is something completely new that we, we could never have done on our own. And if that works, and I mean, I, I can't see why it won't, because it's a very logical project, this pro deposit, this one, um, that'll be a really nice change. Because in the past, we were just drilling the right unit and occasionally hitting the channels. Now we can target the channels and see where they're going. So. <clears throat> okay, so it saves money and time, essentially. Basically, yeah, it just yeah. it's just a refining it's getting more you're getting more information out of the same data. And okay. that's really what the AI gets you. Got it. Thank you. Um so just a few project few pictures of the project there. I mean that for those who haven't seen that's the conglomerate in the front and center. Um and on the top right is the you know some of the old get input workings. Um so at this point what I'll do is I'm gonna switch to into our software project. Um, into our software and MicroMine and give you a walk through the program in a little bit more detail. Here, Nick, maybe just a quick question on how much money you will spend on exploration this year. Um, that will depend on how much we have. Um, but, you know, like I said, the gold spot program here is a couple of thousand meters. Uh, then our geologists have added um, another 10,000 meters of drilling that they would like to do in pure exploration. And then there's probably you know, once we get into it, 40,000 meters of infill to be done as part of the feasibility study. So that's the sort of the, to the total program. And um, it sort of depends on on the timing of the funds. <clears throat> okay. Can you see that micromine window now? Yes, that looks good to me. Okay. So again, this is that same view of the project. And I please have ask everyone to have a little bit of patience with me. Um, I used to be a master at running this, but as a CEO, now I get less chance. Um, Castello Sonia's village is down here, just to give you an idea where we are. The same horseshoe shape from the gold soil anomaly. If I can turn that off, you can actually see the, the pits in here. And what I'm going to do is give you another view of this, of to show you the information that we actually get from Gold Spot and that goes into all of our planning and all of our thinking on how to run this project. But it is interesting because it gives you a a very good understanding of what this project actually looks like underground. Um, so here we go. So here we're just way off to the west of the project still here. And um, we'll just turn on, turn on that. So that is the, the dots you can see there now are the actual individual soil samples. I've turned them, I prefer them to the um, to the contours for this sort of work because it shows you you know where 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 golds come from a little bit more accurately and what i'm going to do i'm just going to start pulling back through this project and start explaining what we're seeing here you're seeing the subsurface geology as i sort of peel back the surface and what we see is that just here now we're getting into esperanza south um generally this red unit or this blue unit you find associated with mineralization and, and the units in between the around, but they're pretty good markers for understanding where you're at. Um, so what, what you see is you've got the blue unit here coming straight into the middle of the Esperanza South pits, and then it goes underneath the whole plateau, comes back up on the other side. Um, again, you've got two and a half kilometer scale bar there, so a good five, six kilometers away surfaces again and what do we find we find gold in soils on the surface there I mean, if you actually showed that anomaly it'd be there but you know you've got gold values in the surface there no drilling whatsoever um, to support it um, i will mention that it looks like the gold is in the soils is a lot less here than on this side it could be less we don't know but it's also partly to do with this flatter dip you get a bigger intersection of the surface um, but anyway, I will keep moving this back here. And this is why, you know, when we talk about how much gold is there, you've got to remember when the 1.4 million ounces 
is in these pits here that go down. Let's see if I can get the depth of them. This sort of deep down to this level here. None, nothing down here is is considered. This is one deposit that keeps going um, underground, you know, underground, and then resurfaces on the other side. And you can see gold in soils here. These green um, drill holes are the gold spot drill holes that they've come up and planned in. You can see they're sort of targeting a certain horizon there above the blue unit. Um, you know, and the blue unit coming in here, and we've you know got gold probably above it there and above it here in the middle um, and that's where you know what we're targeting but the total mineral endowment you know there's got to be huge because there's going to be it's it's highly um hard well, it's hard for me to understand how you can have gold at the west end here and then six kilometers over on the east side when the same unit outcrops you've got a lot of gold in it and there's nothing in between um you know so you would imagine that same gold deposit has trends all the way across, you know, so that's what we talk about. There is potentially open pit, you know, um, potential for this later on in life because there's so much gold in the ground here. Our job is to find the areas where it's eco most economic and where the shallow open pit high margin material is right now. So, okay. Cause that portion on the left where it dips deeper, you're not targeting that because you're thinking it might be too deep. Well, it's it's going to come shallow here. It's going to be steeper, so you're going to get less ounces per vertical meter. It'll go your your your, your pits will get deep too quickly, um, but there's definitely potential there, um, and and it could be that if it's this steep, that's where you've got your open pit potential. Um, you know, underground mine uh, steep dipping unit is is a favourable sort of way to do that, or you can end up with a you know eighty meter deep pit, still mining all of this stuff because you can see that soil anomaly just keeps on going all the way through the hills here so that's going to be all that it's this stuff right at the bottom here which is probably a kilometer deep which is mm. too deep for any open pits but you know i mean open pits can easily come to 150 meters deep which is you know just down here but that's also gives you a pretty good idea of the scale of this property you know this is the optimized pit here for esperanza south and um yeah, there you go. That's probably 100 meters deep, that pit there, you know, and it's just touching the surface. I mean, there's so much more there below. <clears throat> um, and, and, and this is what really what I wanted to show you, what this deposit looks like underground. It is one deposit. And that that's what really aided our understanding. And the AI work that Goldspot have, have done for us has allowed, have allowed us to model, you know, describe to them what we understand and how this deposit was formed. And now we've got this amazing model where we can target, you know, I mean, even, even here's a good example. There's a fluctuation in the unit and Goldspot say, well, here, the, 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 you know, the conglomerate, the great host of units are going to be shallow enough for you to target and maybe bring that pit into here and you open up this whole area. Um, you know, it would be a really nice extension to these pits, you know. That is interesting. Any indication on if there could be higher grade aspects to this, or that just really depends on the drill results then? Um, there, you know, we, we know the grade varies through the deposit. I mean, obviously there's some nice grades in Esperanza South. There are in general lower grades in Esperanza Center. Um, you know, I mean, statistically for me, it would be very unlikely that the part where it's outcrops at Esperanza South ha just happens to be the very highest grade material on the property. It's possible that that's a chance, but it's statistically unlikely. So I think there's, you know, there will likelihood the highest grade section of the deposit is still underneath somewhere, still buried. And, you know, if it's close enough to surface, we'll find it. But, um, you know, so, yeah, so I think there is a pretty good chance of finding additional high grade. And, and like I said, and this becomes interesting when we see this very shallow, just skimming below the surface. Um, and what's interesting is the geochemistry, the soil geochem we get is only when the gold comes to surface. It's not a um, it's not a process like lateralization in Australia where you can have buried gold giving you a surface expression. It's only when the gold comes to surface because there is no lateralization or weathering here. It's fresh rock. So if there's gold in this area here, you would not get much of a signal on the surface. I mean, there are actually a few gold you know gold grades in soil there which means there might be some leakage from here but it's um 
it's just so much potential. I mean, that's sort of what I wanted to get across in this today is, you know, we've been, I think the guy, the team have done a great job in moving this forward and getting to our, you know, PFS and getting that full, getting that going. But there is still so much more to, to unlock and to look at, you know, as you, as you look forward here, you know, you can just see those units cutting right across, getting into Esperanza Center over there, you know, the, the sort of the red unit coming up and being the main mineralizing, mineralizing unit there. Um, and as you get further out, you know, you're coming into a lower, lower down, this, this unit here seems to be mineralized, which it's not in other places. And you just wonder what is underneath, what units haven't we found yet? Um, and that's before you even get into potentially remobilized gold. Um, so I will just quickly turn off the soils. So you can see that those green uh, marks there are the gold spot drill holes. And as I said, our team have sort of followed up with these green to sort of effectively take the same program, but add more to it and add obvious extensions, obvious filling in of you know, maybe some indicator inferred resources to indicate it and obvious extensions of this pit you know like here i can i can imagine they see gold which is the purple there that's the main part of the ore body there and the geologists have put these green holes to extend that pit out green holes here to extend these pits down here that's simple work that effectively anyone can do because it's just extending what you already know um yeah, so that's where we got the sort of the, the gold spot targeted program, looking at specific new targets, specific areas, really targeting channels, targeting new new ore bodies. Um, and our drill program is on top of that, we would do the gold spot first, obviously, just doing normal extension to areas where we're you know fairly confident things just extend and keep going. Okay, so that's pretty uh, that, that's pretty straightforward there, Nick. We're yeah. drilling by resources to extend them. What about some of these other far off holes, like we're seeing in the top right corner of the map here? The more blue sky potential of finding new resources, new ounces, not just extending on what you already know. Yeah, well, that's what's interesting. I mean, if um, you know, the, the, there's light green ones in the top right there. If we Tilt this a bit better so we can see a bit better. Yeah, the gold spot holes, yeah, they would open up something completely new in this area. And then, you know, the idea would be you drill those few holes. Um, I would have to do a bit of research to oh, see. I mean, they've, they've obviously targeted, they've gone, well, there's a soil anomaly there. This gold's come from somewhere. We need to find where it is. Um, yeah, so that's looking in a new unit. You can see this this unit here it generally hasn't been mineralized in other places. So they're looking at a completely new target, and they've got six or seven holes up there. And you know, if they hit, it's a completely new target in a new horizon, which would generate you know obviously a follow on draw program to add those resources. But you know, for me again, the important thing is that guidance, that very strong guidance we gave them, is that we want things within 100 meters of surface. So they've gone, okay, well, here's here's spots where we think, you know, you're gonna find that. Actually, this is Esperanza East. You can see the little tiny Esperanza East pits there. Um, gold spot have been helping us because, you know, we were having some issues on exactly working out where the gold was going there. And they've said, look, this is the spot to drill. This is where we think those channels and those, you know, orientations are going. So yeah, that would just add on massively into that area. Yeah, well, and that's all the whole blue sky. I think that's why yeah. people are interested about that because it could yeah. change the overall project. Do you have a general idea of what the allocation is going to be then between drilling around pits to grow that mineralization versus some of these more blue sky holes, more exploration holes? Um, we we don't at this point. Um, it'll be it'll be very much driven by um, funding and timing. Um, I was just going to try and do another. Um, so I, we don't have that allocation worked out yet. Okay. Um, you know, in a, in a perfect world, obviously we would love to drill all of it. Um, you know, like every geologist, that's what we want to do, but whether we have the funds and that, or whether we're pushed into, I mean, if the permitting is going really well, like it is right now, um, there'll be pressure to get the feasibility study done as quick as possible. So we can see those things a bit more from an, in a different direction. You know, that'll be the consideration, you know, like right now, permitting is going really, really well. And if it is, you want to make, hey, while well, the sun shines with, you know, with the authorities and means getting the feasibility study ready, being ready to 
build that plant and, and, and move it forward as quick as possible. So you wouldn't want to be drilling exploration and, and risk slowing down your permitting. You want to get that feasibility study done and make sure everything's ready. But again, this is this is now looking sort of north to south here or sort of west to east. You know, again, okay. you've got five, seven kilometers. And you've got the same things coming out here and here. So it sounds like you guys have a lot of targets that you could go after. We do. I mean, the, the project is big, and that's what I think, you know, even internally. Yeah, I think there is, um, you know, so much gold there that we, you know, we believe is there. We understand the system. In the system, there's a lot of gold. The trick is finding the economic portions of it and, you know, and juggling that permitting, how much you want to advance permitting, how much you want to grow the deposit, and, um, you know, and, and how much money it's going to cut, take with the drilling available in Brazil. And obviously, right now we're drilling shallow holes because it's the you know, most efficient, and um, you know, and, and I think that's what we'll continue to do. I don't think we'll start chasing deep targets unless, for some reason, we do get something very exciting to look at down deep. And we work, you know, that'll be the next program with with Goldspot. We'll be looking at some new technologies to get deeper down into that bottom of that basin and seeing if we're seeing some variations in that portion of the deposit because you can get concentrations at deep down in these deposits okay so still a lot of potential out there you keep mentioning that it does depend on how much money the company raises to drill here how much money do you think the company needs to get this program underway i know that's a tough question but it's a tough i mean it's yeah it's a tough project you know, we got four million dollars right now so we you know right and, and we're steaming through permitting really you know, and i said that's going really really well um yeah, you know, the the PF, the feasibility drilling will cost probably another four million, and then you you know it'd be nice to have uh, another million dollars on top of that to do some exploration drilling. You know, yeah. so it's not you're not talking huge amounts of drilling money for the for the first pass exploration drilling for some of this. So we would probably be able to squeeze that into whatever project program we do next, and you know we're really hoping to be drilling um you know after summer here sometime. Okay, uh, in terms of drill availability in uh, in. Uh, Brazil, where does that stand? Do you have drills available to you? Um, it's it's always a challenge. Yeah, for the drills we want, the ones we want to get, um, you know, not all drills are created equal. So we want to make sure we get the right ones who can do a good job for us. Um, so there there are timing issues there as well. You know, okay. And there are there are new drillers moving into the country. Um, I'm really hoping that happens very soon and we can you know, get a bit more competitive market going as far as the, the RC drilling, which is what we want to do because it's generally fastest and cheapest. And if it's not cheapest, it's not worth doing. Fair. Uh, another question that came in. I understand that the project that you currently hold is large, but does anybody hold the land around the project? What information can you give us there? Um, no, most of it around is, is farming country. Um, there is... There are there are empty concessions around us, um, and when you when you advance your concessions in Brazil, you know you you claim a large exploration area, and as you go through the three years, six years, the next then the then the um, Brazilian sort of scoping study you have to do the pie. Um, you're generally reducing the size, and so most of around us is where we've 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 had a look at stuff on the ground and dropped it, and it's still sitting there. So no, there's no one around us, and and it makes sense because you have got this. It's like an island of sediments in this sea of granite. So the granite around us is generally thought not to hold a lot of gold, although I've seen people get egg on the face saying that before. So I won't say it too loud um, before we can get in and have a look at it ourselves. Um, but yeah, there's there's no companies in and around. I think the closest, well, I mean, there's probably people with concessions, but the closest people really operating would be Sarabia, but Karinga. Okay. Uh, Nick, I guess to wrap us up then, what news flow can investors be expecting out of the company is you do get closer to a drill program and keep advancing the project. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, in the last webinar, we mentioned our um, optimization program. Uh, that MET, pro MET program is nearly ready now. Um, I'm sort of waiting any any the next week or the next few weeks to get those MET results, hopefully. Um, so that'll probably be the next bit of news that comes out, those results and, and the flow and work from that. And, um, you know, permitting, will be filing for our permits very, very soon. Uh, and you know, so that'll be a, a big, big step forward. I think once that's done, then we're freed up to to look back at the expiration and get into this program. So, you know, we want to be filing for our permits early in Q2. So, um, you know, once we've got that done, we then focus back on expiration. But right now, um, the full team of full hands, all hands on deck are on permitting. So that should finish April, May and um, focus on expiration after that. 
Okay. Well, that's near term. We are already yeah. halfway through March now. So, yeah. all right, Nick, appreciate the update here. I like these shortened webinars where we do get to focus in on different aspects of the company. If anybody has any follow-up questions regarding the exploration that TriStar is going to do here, please email me, fleck at kereport.com, and I will get Nick to address those. So, Nick, thank you again for your time. Thank you for putting together this presentation, and I'm sure we'll be chatting soon. Thanks a lot, Corey. Thanks, everybody.